All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever y'all are at. i um, doing some TA today, so Bitcoin um, looks like it's starting to break out. Um, I wanted to go over this because I saw a lot on some forums and then on Twitter that um, we were getting a head and shoulders. So a head and shoulders pattern is actually a bearish pattern. Head and shoulders, not shampoo, head and shoulders pattern. Uh, all right, so here, here we go. So this is a, uh, it's a bearish pattern. Um, here, here it is. So you have a neckline, it's like a shoulder, a head, and then a, a shoulder. Um, cup and handle is what I actually like to use because um, it's basically the same um, type of pattern, but um, it's just, it doesn't necessarily have to have this left shoulder. Uh, it can just have the cup and the handle. Watch, I'll type that in real quick. So, cup and handle pattern. It's basically just the last last bit of it. Um, there's kind of different ways to, to draw it. Um, here it is. So, cup and handle. That could also be a uh, uh, inverted head and shoulders, which would be um, the, the bullish case of uh, head and shoulders. Right here. So, this is a head and shoulders pattern. This is an inverse head and shoulders. That's a bullish but if it's cup and handle, it's the same thing. And this is like, you know, an inverted cup and handle. I don't actually think an inverted cup and handle exists. I don't think that's um, a chart pattern, but I use it. Um, cup, maybe it is, I don't know. I've never actually Googled it. Yeah, I guess it is. So it's like the same thing. Has same kind of, um, same kind of uh, pattern type on the, on the, uh, on the, uh, whenever you draw it, but um, it's just inverted. So I actually use the cup and handle. It's easier to spot, but a lot of people were saying head and shoulders. Uh, so this would be drawn this way on the four hour. So it was like, that was like a little bit of FOMO, right? A little bit of uh, uncertainty and doubt. We had some, some, it was a, there was a drop speculation that it's going back to, you know, 20 mid twenties, which was possible. We had that on the chart. Um, but let's, let me draw this and show you what people were talking about. So it's, and I'm gonna draw it red because that would be bearish, right? So here, and it doesn't have to be exactly perfect um, as far as, oh, I, maybe I don't wanna draw it with this one. I wanna draw it with something that'll make, let me move it. I think it's the arc or it's curve. Here we go. Now just draw this up here, make that, oh, I wanna make the fill red too. There we go. Should be good enough. All right, let's do another one. So here's the head. And then they were talking about another shoulder here. <laughs> Something like, you would have drawn it like this, right? So that's what they were saying. But here's the things about patterns. Patterns are not confirmed until they actually break. There's probabilities on, you know, when they'll break, but you know, it's called the neckline, right? So you would draw it, and it doesn't have to be, uh, they can be at an angle, they can be a little bit, they can be flat, but you would say like, I would say that this, I would actually say that this neckline is here. I would include the these wicks, even though I usually don't draw them. Right here. Uh, but sometimes, you know, you just take what the chart gives you. This one gave you some wicks that you could have used um, here and here. So once the price closed on the four hour below this neckline, uh, that could have that could have signaled you that we're going lower. But there's also fake outs, right? So this could have broke. Um, in the real world, you know, this is like a textbook example, but in the real world, this could have went like this down, and then you could have went here, and we could have went up, right? It could have been a failed uh, breakdown. But uh, so yeah, that's that. Since we closed above this high. That's not that's not viable. So, people that were drawing it, uh, you know, maybe they're just bringing awareness to it. But I didn't have I didn't show any value in it because I'm 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 bullish on the price right now. We had price targets that uh, that we hit, um, and it, you know, just in this part of the cycle, I think we're going to get this this double peak uh, within the cycle, and we'll be you know 
at 60K within the next, uh, by the end of February, beginning of March. I could be wrong. But right now, based on this mayor multiple ban, um, this is the kind of market we're getting. We're getting this market cycle of, of the double of the double peak. Uh, we go here, dropped a little bit below it. Go here, drop a little bit below it again. But price moves quick. Look at this, exactly. Boom, pop below it. We're about to go back above it. <clears throat> that upper that upper band, sixty k. You know, it's like 60, 64 now. So, um, just an observation. I'm not telling you to uh, throw everything in. You know, we're going from thirty seven to to 60k but you know everyone has different risks so uh but yeah so we got the nine on the four hour i'm going to was there anything that was back to retested um we didn't quite get here i would have loved to get here at 29,688. uh looks like we're we're rebounding we can look at the hour even though i don't trade on it um yeah we're on an eight that could be a reversal the 30 MA move, uh, 30 moving average strategy uh, would have got you back in. Uh, and this works pretty well. Uh, we're up. So that's Bitcoin. Nothing crazy. Um, this candle I really kind of don't like. That's a uh, hammer candle. That could be an indication of a reversal. We are on the seventh week. But usually, I mean, the high can come in on number six. On the sixth candle on the T sequential, <clears throat> that can be the high, uh, but we're going to get an eight here on the next one, um, and we're having a thirteen countdown. That's just something different. I usually just trade the nine, the TD sequential nine, the basic TD sequential nine strategy. So uh, yeah, next week we can have a, a, a bullish week, get back over forty k. Um, I really wanted to see it, you know. I wanted to see it over 37, and we, we're over 37. Here's the 9. You know, we get a green number above a prior green number above the 9. That's bullish. We're going higher. Uh, we can look at the RSI real quick. Um, yep, broke down. Now we're bouncing. Weekly, we're still high, but that's fine. No big deal there. Uh, the 4-hour, we bottomed out on an 8, 9. And if you would have bought it, you'd be up. Uh, the hourly was a little bit, uh, we kind of bottomed here. We actually bottomed here, the five, we came up, went back down, but we're getting this um, divergence that I always talk about um, right here. That that would have been bullish. That told you to get back in right there. It's converging bullish. <clears throat> we can look at the CMF real quick. Uh, I'm now pull up the Ichimoku cloud after this. So CMF was showing the same thing, lower prices, uh, bearish divergence. I mean bullish divergence here. All right. So that's on the hourly. What does the four hour look like? You know, I usually yeah four hour. Four hour, yeah, I mean, it It really was no divergence, but, um, you know, CMF still, that still looks bullish. Uh, let's pull up the Ichimoku Cloud since we did have a pullback. And see if that gave us anything. Yeah, found support here. Found support here. We're breaking it out of this. Yeah, let's bring up the SAR because I haven't looked at that in a while. Stopping reversal points. Currently at 25,833. Now we broke it here, we're back up. We almost touched it here and it almost broke. Four hour, we probably broke it and now we're back above it. Yep. So this looks bullish. Any price targets? Price target. <laughs> I'm going to say around this 40 area. In the near term, yeah, around this 40. Um, this could be a like a W pattern, is what this is called. Here. Oh. Not quite, but I mean, it's... Yeah, there we go. You drill this higher. Uh, I can type that in, W pattern.
There you go. W pattern. That's a bullish. That's bullish. It's also like a channel, right? So. Could be getting that. Target would be the height of this. Yeah, over 40. So we would get a new all-time high. When would we do that? Um, if we walk this all the way down to a 9, then we could get some resistance here. Um, right here. So, what is that? 2 o'clock tomorrow? So, so that's Bitcoin. I'm bullish. I did want to go over Tilray, because that... That hit exactly where it should have. Uh, it moved exactly like, you know, I expected. Uh, four hour, we have something here that wasn't um, retested. So I'm going to put an indicator there. Could we get back there? Yeah, this is plausible, right? These prices are plausible until we reach an, a new all-time high. That new all-time high is at 300. So all this is, in, you know, still fair game. Uh, this is good. We had a nine here. There was some profit taking, look like, at the end of the day. So 1347, this 21, uh, 1321 was a nine that didn't get retested whenever it dropped. This was there since February. I can take that off my chart now. Oh, actually I can't. I mean, I technically can because this is a green number, but I'm going to leave it here. Uh, there's probably a lot of support here. Um, but the weekly, this weekly we reached. <laughs> Man, this just shows you how aggressive this fell. Uh, I mean, right now, the IPO price was, it opened at 20, uh, what was the IPO price? The IPO weekly opened up at $23, so you're, so you're below the IPO price. So, I think this is going higher. I think this is going to be an aggressive move this year. Uh, it's already up based on when you should have entered. It's already up. You would have entered, you would have went all in, what did I say, last week? I think here, yeah, whenever we had a four hour close above this is when I said <laughs> right here. So you'd be up um, around 70% in about two weeks. So, yeah, so let me, let me take this. So this is, uh, as you can see, this is an exhaustion point, and now it's serving as resistance. Uh, we, we went above it. I can take this out. So we got there. Now are we going to have a sell-off? Uh, let's look at, I know the RSI broke out on the day. Oh, yeah, we're about to. I mean, maybe tomorrow's the end of the week. There could be some profit taking tomorrow that could get us back down to these, uh, you know, 13, mid-13 areas. Uh, what would I be doing? Yeah, see, we're on an 8. The 8 can be the top. We could get a 9 tomorrow. Uh so a lot of people view this RSI as like oversold, overbought, and it is a good indication of that. But once it gets to a certain point um, and starts to break certain areas, like 50 or 40 to the downside, uh, it kind of serves as like momentum. It, it, some people view it more as a momentum indicator. And I guess whenever we, we get here at these areas that seem significant, I would also look at it as a momentum indicator. And you can see uh, that's kind of what happened. We broke 70. Uh, I knew once we got past this 13 area, we would get to 15 quickly. Uh, on the 4-hour, whenever I did the analysis, I think two days ago, um, I said 13.21, and we could get there. It was the 11th whenever I did it, and we could get there by tomorrow a little bit after lunch. And this candle ended and opened at 12.30, which is a little bit after lunch. So that call was, you know, right there, and we went even higher, right? The the, I mean, if I look at the volume, the on-balance volume, it probably went up a good bit. Yeah, see? So we were here, and then it was it had already broke this area. That could have been, that was a signal here, right? A green number above a prior green number above the 9. That was an inch, that was another entry if you didn't get in. So that closed at 1235, 1235. Um, here, I would be up, you know, 20% in the day. Again, good. <laughs> on-balance volume's high, looks still great. On the daily, it probably looks great. Yep. I mean, it still looks great. <laughs> this accumulates over time, the way this is calculated, so you'll you'll keep on seeing higher highs unless there's an aggressive sell-off. Uh, but this is good. This is all good. Weekly, that's good. 
uh, CMF is also good. That's breaking out. You know, once we get past this area, which we kind of already buy it. You know, this is all bullish. Uh, this hasn't quite broke it right there. That could be a resistance area. <laughs> maybe we break that. Maybe we get, you know, like I said, maybe we get a little bit of a pullback. Um, yeah, one. I can I can bring up the other indicator. Nine. Like I said, a retest. Uh, one, two. This is a countdown to a 13. Yep, nothing. So yeah, I'm, you know, I'm kind of expecting maybe a little bit of a pullback. <laughs> I'll bring up the RSI again, just look at it real quick. Yeah, we could get, I mean, this is still good movement, man. This isn't nothing to really be, we still haven't broken out. We would want this to go higher than these. And we're at 70, we came back, we pulled back, we would want it to go even higher. So we can still, we can still move. <laughs> I'll bring up the Ichimoku Cloud. Yeah, we're way above it. The Ichimoku Cloud, I feel, works great whenever we're at lower levels and we're looking for breakout and support areas. Uh, once we break above it, yeah, there's not enough data here to form one on the weekly. But So, bullish on that. Uh, you know, my price target is basically the moon. I think this year this will go up aggressively. Uh, I think at the minimum it'll get 5x. You know, from so I say that from 10. So I think we'll go to 50 at bare minimum. Uh, but we'll see this next area of resistance. <laughs> uh, we're pretty much where we're at. Uh, you know, once we get, I would say, past this area. Above, you know, 16 $17 area. We're going to get to this 19 quickly. <laughs> and then, you know, that's basically the IPO price. So... Well, it's still below the IPO price. So I think, you know, these, these next levels of <laughs> resistance area will, will be here at 25, between 25 and say 28. And then after that, you know, we're just, I think this will be, a, this will be like a stepping, like a stepping, like a step ladder. We're going to go up a little bit, consolidate, up a little bit, consolidate. Um, still looking out for when the date is for the MORAC to get voted on. Um, right now we have a trend line that looks intact. I don't see any other patterns here. Um, so this thing just got, you know, just got destroyed for so long. Uh, but that's how, that's how markets bottom, right? They go, they just go sideways. They bottom, you know, a couple, one of two ways. They, 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 they you know, it's aggressive. They consolidate it at a bottom for the longest and then they start moving up or, um, you know, it's aggressive move up. It's a quick dip down and then back right back up. So, but this is showing, you know. Had a lot of consolidation near lows, basically for a year, almost pretty much a year. How many? How many weeks? How many weeks before it started to tell you to enter? Here, I mean, this is pretty much the bottom. So twenty nine weeks. <laughs> so yeah, two hundred and ten days, almost a full year. That's the way these markets bottom. <laughs> you know, they can they can consolidate or they can be aggressive with a with a sharp. This would have been a, like, you know, if it would have rebounded here, it would have sharp dip and then gone back up. Uh, but it was just a slow, steady decline and then mellow it out, and now we're you know ramping back up. So, um, something else. I know that there was a request to look at something. I have to look back. Give me a second. On one of the previous videos. Was it? It was in the comments. Let's see. Uh, RKT. So I think that's Rocket Mortgage. RKT. Let's see. RKT. All right. Now this assessment will be what I think. All right. So it looks like it just IPO'd in August. It really doesn't have enough data on the weekly for anything, you know, for me to say anything on it. But we do have an area here. 
that would be retest. Almost got there. Right. Um, that's about it on the on the daily. Four hour. This could go lower. Now this is the way I trade this. Uh, are you going to find this in the textbook? No, I've I've gone through the book. Uh, this is the way I found that it works for me. Is this wrong or right? Um, if you find a trading strategy that makes you profitable, uh, it's right for you. So this is the way it works for me, and this is the way I trade it. So, um, yeah, that's it on the four hour. That's the daily four hour. I don't see anything else. There's a lower lower low here. Here's one here. This is the way I would go. I would start labeling things if I had it. I don't know if I'm looking at this. Why is this not? Oh, here we go. Okay, so what do I see? I see something that's potentially. A ch I mean, I, I, just, I just see a channel, right? Let's see. So is there anything? Let's see that hourly. Yeah, it could go lower. Here's a here's an example of a cup and handle, right? I just said it. I just talked about it. Let me turn the let me turn the magnet off. All right. So we need initial target here on the break. Pretty much got there. Rever a little bit of reversal. That is kind of a W pattern. Not really. I think we're gonna go lower. What's the downspout here? About seventeen dollars, but right exactly right where this is right here on the four hour. <laughs> All right, so that's a cup and handle, an inverted cup and handle pattern from the from basically the four hour, exactly where, oddly exactly where the TD exhaustion point is. You know, I drew this first. I didn't see this after, till after. Um, let's look at the daily. This is trending down. I know this was trending down. Um, so this is the thing about IPOs. I don't, I don't like to trade them. I don't have enough data on them to really say with confidence where it's going. I feel like uh, in IPOs, it's, they're more reliant on fundamentals and what the company's doing and how much money they're raising and who's investing. Uh, I don't have enough technical information on them. So this I would not, I would not go into. You know, I didn't go into the Uber IPO. I didn't go into the Lyft IPO. Um, there's always other trades with substantial gains. Um, does the one-hour strategy work for this? But I mean, I don't know if I would really do this. There's not enough history on it. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do that. It'll. It could give up a, a good result, but there's not enough history on it because it could. It could essentially catch this initial run up and say it's profitable. Um, but there's really not enough history on it. So what do I think is going to happen? I would not be in this. You have some consolidation on the Bollinger Band, oh, on the hourly. <laughs> on the daily, it's pretty wide. Oh, maybe there's some consolidation. Yeah, so it's, like I said, there, I think there's a channel here. Let's just run through the, let's just run through the, uh, through the indicators. Let's do them on the four hour too. CMF. I don't see anything. I mean, there's yeah, there's some divergence here. It's going up. Um, let's look at the Ichimoku cloud. There might not be enough data. Yeah, so these Ichimoku clouds on these crosses, price could go into the crosses. Um, there's not enough data here. Let's go to the hourly. <laughs> yeah, price kind of went into this cross, bounced up. You know, I like to see this blue line. I believe this is called the conversion line. Yeah, conversion line. 
So there's a baseline. These are all the periods that the uh, HMO Cloud is working. This is not the standard HMO Cloud set settings. These are the ones that I picked up in the crypto space, but I also like to use them in the regular, you know, regular traditional market. Um, so yeah, I like to, I mean, you can look here, this conversion line is, this has a Japanese uh, name as well, but I'm, I didn't, I didn't actually, I don't, I don't know the names. Uh, I've heard them before, but I, I didn't take the time to memorize them. Uh, this isn't my base strategy, but I use it to look at, you know, resistance support levels. So you can see it served as resistance here. I really don't like to take any trades unless it's above this conversion line. You can see it broke above it, support, bounced, kind of support, and then it failed, and then it started trending down. Um, yeah, I don't see anything where I would be super excited about this. Uh, on balance volumes going down. Yeah, it looks like it's at a like a support area. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's at a support area. Right here. Support and resistance area. About right there. So if this would break below this 2111 or 211, I would say that that's bearish. And it's probably going to go lower on price. Um, RSI. You know, nothing spectacular. We went oversold. We had a nine bounce. You know, one to four candle correction. Looks like consolidation. Could go lower. There's going to be resistance here, right here at 21.15. Yeah, I'm not saying, this is not something I would be interested in. Um... Yeah, this could be just an accumulation. Accumulate your, your position if you think Rocket Mortgage is going to go higher. Uh, I, for one, you know, real estate is a hard asset, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of issues. I mean, Rocket Mortgage is, mortgage is lending. So, and I know, you know, Fed buys mortgage-backed securities, so they're the, they're the buyer of last resort, but... Um, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac did the same thing, and they're now OTC. They're not on a publicly, uh, publicly, you know, a public st like stock. They're not in the S and P. They're not in Dow or the Nasdaq. They're they're OTC. Um, is that going to happen to Rocket Mortgage? I don't. I don't know. I'm just saying. I don't. Based on the technicals, if I didn't know what this what this uh, company was, I would quickly look at this, and then I would move on and know that this uh, j this just IPO'd. You know. This is just a trend. This is a downtrend. This is actually, yeah, I mean, you could do, there's a bunch of things you can draw here. I said I want to do it on the far, four hour. Let's do some sort of trend line. Let me hide all this stuff to make it cleaner. Right there, you want at least three touches. That's one, two, three. Um, I mean, I really like this breakdown right here. This cup and, this inverted cup and handle. That I saw. Right, was that on this asset? Um, am I just yeah, I'm making no, I'm not, I'm making stuff up. <laughs> right here, the little one. <laughs> but there's you know bigger, a bigger, you know, one two, and then it broke down. But I like this that I drew. You know, I like I, I, if I was looking at this, I would say it's going to go lower. Maybe not. Maybe that's not really something to draw but I like this inverted cup and handle we just talked about it too so that was a plus yeah I'm staying away from this I don't see anything there even your short t time frame I mean there's, this is just trending up but yeah I'm not seeing anything unless there's some sort of fundamental news all of these moving averages are trending down I mean you can look at the guppy that's a it's a collection of um, exponential moving averages there's some separation here. Yeah, we could get a bounce. I just don't like the way this looks. I'm not entering. You know, we kind of had separation here. Yeah, I'm not entering this. So that's the analysis of that. Yeah, it was a comment in there. Um, not telling you to get out of your position. I mean, if you believe in this thing long term, you know, go for it. Uh, Just based on the technicals, I think this is going lower. So, all right. Well, that's it. I was a little bit drawn out on some things, but 
I was taking time and look, looking at some stuff. Uh, so, yep, thanks for watching.